At this hour, Donald Trump is back in Battleground, Georgia, for the first time in almost two months, and he just finished speaking there, by the way. Notably absent from today's event is the state's popular Republican governor, with the presidential race there still too close to call. Brian Kemp, who Trump spent 10 minutes railing against just last month. But today, he seems to have had a change of heart, offering nothing but kind words. I also want to thank Governor Kemp. He's been fantastic. He really has been fantastic, and we're going to get this done. But I want to thank Governor Kemp for his support. Great support. Tia Mitchell is the Washington correspondent for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. It's good to see you again, Tia. What should we make of the nice Donald Trump when he's talking about Brian Kemp today? Kemp today? Well, I think we should make of it that um, the folks who got in his ear after his his critical comments in August made a difference. And they basically convinced him that there's no political upside to picking a fight with the popular governor of Georgia. And he seems to have listened. Um, Kemp, for his part, always kind of never played into the beef. And so it was always on Trump to kind of make nice. And and he did um, not, you know, weeks after the rally, but now he's doing it in Georgia, kind of speaking directly to Georgia voters, making it clear that I'm not sure if he's changed his mind about Brian Kemp, but at least his forward-facing messaging about Brian Kemp is much different. Yeah, you're right that, that Kemp has stayed above the fray. And, and he, what does it you know, help him not to because he is very popular in Georgia. You got to wonder, though, if Trump invited him, and we don't know that he would, but if he invited him to a, to a future rally, if Kemp would say, I'm busy. Yeah, I mean, that to me is one of the big question marks is if Kemp and Trump will ever share the stage. I think that's going to be up to Kemp. I think uh, Trump would love for Kemp to show up and, and make a symbolic gesture that they truly buried the hatchet and that Kemp is all in. But thus far, it seemed that Kemp has refrained from that. He's doing other things. He's telling people he supports Trump. He said he's putting his political machine behind electing Trump. But will Brian Kemp show up somewhere where Trump will also be? That remains to be seen. There are a couple other things going on in your state that are interesting, and so I want to ask you about them. One is that the state election board is proposing a plan that would make pictures, photos of ballots available to voters, um, what, within three days after the election? What's the point, and is it going to happen? So the point is to allow for inspection of ballots. This, again, is something to appease the folks who um, are believing misinformation and lies about Georgia's election system not being secure, not being accurate. So to try to appease those folks, the, the thinking is they would be able to inspect ballots quickly. Now, um, there, is, um, there is a way to inspect ballots now, but the state election board is considering new rules to kind of put the pictures online and make it more accessible. They're saying it's about widening the accessibility, being transparent. But of course, a lot of critics are talking about, A, you know, county election boards are already stretched thin in the days after the election. This would be yet another task for them. And there also are security concerns, quite frankly, mm. about putting images of ballots online. So, um, but again, it's just a long, it's another one of the laundry list of things the Georgia election board kind of remade to be much more uh, conservative leaning um, are pushing through prior to this year's election. And just a little tidbit here. Your paper reported that the Trump campaign launched a social media ad over the weekend. It featured the image of a beautiful mountain range in Georgia. Uh, problem is, it was the wrong Georgia. Uh, it was, in fact, a stock photo of a mountain range in the country of Georgia. I mean, this is widely regarded as the most professional campaign staff Trump has had. And I'm wondering, are people buzzing about this? Are they talking about yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, that Quick, was yeah. quite a talker when we put it in our newsletter yesterday because it does seem like such a an in a blunder, you know? It's such a, a such a really bad mistake to like confuse these 
state of Georgia for the country of Georgia in a kind of an obvious way. Anyone who's ever seen Georgia's beautiful countryside, but it doesn't look quite like that <laughs> even in the mountain areas of Georgia. And, you know, to just Google a stock image and not really pay attention to, like, the description of the stock image is just... I don't even want to call it a rookie mistake. It just seems very kind of um, school-age mistake, even, if you will. And so, yes, it was quite a talker because it does feed into concerns that Trump isn't running the most pro a very professional operation. And quite frankly, I think it feeds into concerns that the Trump operation is struggling to keep up with some of the things Democrats are doing um, to boost Vice President Harris. Tia Mitchell, it's always good to see you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you coming on the Thank show. You.